Clara Macedo is on her way to a job interview. She rings the bell of a luxury condo apartment, and the security guard asks her to introduce herself over the intercom. She's here to see Dona Anna for a job interview. She's granted access with directions to the woman's condo. She knocks on the door, and a very pregnant woman opens it. She tells her to wait inside, while she finishes her ongoing interview. The person Anna is interviewing has a lot of experience being a nanny, and she sets a very high rate for her services. On the other hand, we find out during Clara's interview that she was a nursing major but dropped out. She doesn't have any experience as a nanny and her only reference is her landlady who just tells Anna to ask Clara where she hid her remote and that her rent is due. Clara, embarrassed, tells Anna that the landlady often drops it under the sofa. With this disappointing interview, Anna regretfully tells her that as she is not affiliated with any agency, she won't hire her. She tells her how she is a pregnant lady living alone and needs someone to help around the house till she has given birth. As soon as she is done saying this, she has a very painful contraction. Clara's nursing knowledge kicks in and she straightens Anna's posture, tells her to take deep, slow breaths and knead her shoulders. Soon her pain is gone and Clara tells her that she's leaving. Anna makes a split-second decision and asks Clara if she can cook as a way to confirm that she's hiring her. Anna gives her a tour of her home, and at the end, she shows her the nursery. The room is a mess of unassembled furniture. Anna explains that she hasn't gotten around to setting up this room because of her pregnancy, and that it would be easier now that Clara's here. A wooden music box catches Clara's attention, and she opens it. It has the most beautiful melody, and Anna explains that this was an heirloom that belonged to her father's grandfather. Clara goes home to collect her things to stay at Anna's place. When she gets home, she takes out her suitcase and opens her cupboard to pack her clothes, and she is shocked. All her clothes are gone. She immediately figures out that the landlady is behind this, and she storms into her house demanding her stuff back. She declines at first. Clara tells her she has a job now, and she will pay. The shrewd woman thinks it over and lets Clara take her clothes back, but makes her leave her microwave behind till she pays her back. It's her first day and Clara arrives at Anna's place right on time. She knocks on her door, but Anna doesn't answer. She opens the door and sees that the whole house is in disarray. A pot is smashed in front of the door, its trail leading towards the kitchen. Clara diligently starts cleaning the house. After she is done cleaning, she makes dinner for Anna. There's nothing but meat in the fridge, so she makes a meat broth. Anna talks a bit about her privileged upbringing, telling her how her mother forced her to take etiquette classes. She stands up and excitedly shows her how her teachers taught her the correct posture. She balances a book on her head while walking. Anna can't hold the balance for more than two steps and laughs, saying clearly those classes had no effect. Clara accompanies Anna to her ultrasound. The doctor asks her if she wants to know the gender of the baby. Anna, who looks anxious and scared, takes a minute to decide and then agrees reluctantly. The doctor tells her that she is having a baby boy. After the doctor's visit, Anna treats herself to new shoes. She has just finished trying on a nice pair of heels when she sees an old friend of hers. She rushes to her, but the friend ignores her completely and walks away. Anna is hurt, but she tries to not let it show. She tells the cashier that she would like to buy the shoes, but her credit card declines, and that further embarrasses her. She hands over her other card and exits the shop in a hurry, not even changing back to her old shoes. Back home, Clara begins painting and assembling the nursery, just as she's about to be done. She hears music. In the living room, Anna has loud music booming and she's dancing to it. What alarms Clara is that she is drinking beer which is harmful to the baby, so she tries to take it away from her. Anna resists, asking Clara to celebrate her birthday with her. Clara just tries to take the bottle out of her hand. She tells Anna that the House Owners Association called her and informed her that she was behind on her bills. This is not the first hint that our seemingly rich heiress is in some kind of financial crisis. Anna ignores Clara 
and picks up a picture of her and her horse Pagode. She starts telling Clara how she misses her horse. Clara settles on the couch with a beer in her hand and asks Anna when she last met the horse. She replies that she had to leave her horse behind. She was to be married in September, but because of her pregnancy, her father sent her away. The child did not belong to her finance, and when she decided to keep the child, her finance ruined her reputation by posting about it on social media. In return, her family disowned her. This condo was her saving grace as it was already in her name. Drunk. Anna sits in Clara's lap and starts taking selfies. Clara comforts Anna by telling her she needn't pay attention to anyone and live her life on her terms. On another visit to the doctor, Anna is advised to cut down on meat intake as her diet is causing issues. Like always, Anna looks scared while getting her ultrasound. Clara brings Anna a machine to hear the baby's heartbeat at home. She tells Anna that she's heading out but before that, she gives her a gift. It's a book of baby names. Anna loves the gift but is sad that Clara is leaving her. At the bar, a woman approaches Clara. She compliments her and slips her her phone number. Back at home, she looks fondly at the scribbled number when a loud crash echoes from the kitchen, jolting Carla. She rushes in to investigate and finds Anna, desperately searching through the fridge for something. Gently, Carla reaches out, trying to guide Anna back to her room. Without warning, Anna whirls around, pulling Carla into a sudden, intense kiss. Carla, taken aback, initially responds, but suddenly, Anna's teeth sink into Carla's lip and her nails scratch deep into Carla's shoulder. Panicking, Carla shoves Anna away. As she touches her bleeding lip, her gaze shifts to, to Anna, whose eyes have changed into yellow color. Clara puts her to bed and tends to her own wound, still in shock. The next morning, Anna is doing her daily dancing exercises. Clara wants to test Anna, so while cooking her lunch, she adds drops of her blood in the spaghetti. She calls Anna to lunch and watches as Anna eats as if she is starving. It's clear that Anna has an appetite for blood, but that doesn't disgust Clara. It makes her want to protect Anna. Their bond deepens further, and by this point, it is more of a relationship between lovers. One day, Anna has a craving for pine nuts, and she pleads with Clara to get some for her. As soon as Clara leaves, Anna is in pain and she takes a lot of pills. But when Clara comes home, she hears the sound of Anna screaming in pain. She is met with the sight of Anna lying on the bed and the baby pushing against her belly. She runs to get her phone to call the doctor, but soon Anna stops screaming. She goes back to check in on Anna, but she is taking her last breaths. The baby has made its way out of his mother's belly. Clara, scared of the monstrous baby, takes out Anna's gun to get rid of it. But what she sees stops her in her tracks. The werewolf pup lays gasping for breath because the mother's umbilical cord is wrapped around his neck. Clara realizes that it was not the baby's fault, it was just trying to survive. She bundles up the baby in a blanket, packs a few important things from around the house, and flees from the scene. She tries to leave the weird baby by the riverbank, but her heart wavers and she takes the baby back to her home. Ten years pass by and now, the child named Joel is young. Clara loves him and he calls her mother, but she has very strict rules for him. He can't eat meat or sweets because she worries he would turn predatory. He isn't allowed to go out till late with friends, especially not on full moon nights. Instead, when the full moon occurs, she asks her son to go to the little room. The little room is a reinforced room where Clara shackles the boy up every month when he has to change. Scared of his strength, she fits the metal door with three locks. With these precautions, everyone is safe from the werewolf boy. Joel knows that his life is very different from everyone, especially when his best friend Mauricio, with his meaty sandwiches, and a lenient father tells him his plans for his 10th birthday. His father would teach him how to drive. Clara throws Joel a surprise birthday party with her landlady and neighbors. The landlady makes him beef stew, but Clara aggressively puts it away 
and tells her that Joel has an allergy. At school, Amanda asks Joel to a school dance. Joel really wants to go and asks his mother, but she denies his request, as it's on a full moon night. Clara tries to be brave about it all, but she misses Anna dearly. Every time she has to lock Joel up, she puts on Anna's favorite music and holds her picture for strength. One day Joel is feeling very weak. This is because of his diet which has no meat in it. Clara has to leave him home to rest, so she asks the landlady to watch over him. Seeing how weak Joel feels, the landlady decides to give Joel some steak. She tells him it's a secret from his mother. Joel eats a bite of it, and it is the best thing he ever tasted. He eats the beef as if he had been starved forever. This awakens something in him. When Clara gets home, she is shocked to see Joel angry. He had gone through her stuff and found Anna's picture. He demands to know who this woman is and why he looks exactly like her. Clara is at a loss for words because she had told Joel she found him abandoned near a river. She tells him she will explain everything once he's older. But Joel won't listen to reason. He tells her that she is a liar and he won't eat her filthy food any longer or go in the little room. He gets so angry he starts changing right at that moment. Clara picks him up and takes him to the little room. She screams at him that she is his mother and he will listen to her. But Joel doesn't listen. He fights back and claws at her. She somehow manages to shackle him. The next morning, she releases him, apologizes, and answers whatever questions he has. Mostly, she said she would tell him when he is older. At last, he asks about his father, and she tells him she knows nothing about him. He doesn't believe Clara, so he sets out to the city with his best friend to look for his mother. He finds an address in the box Clara used to put her mementos from Anna. It was the address of a shoe boutique. The two kids enter the mall and try to look for the boutique. It takes them all night, and the mischievous Mauricio convinces Joel to stay behind while the mall closes. But this proves fatal for Mauricio, as it is a night of the full moon. When night comes, Joel transforms into a werewolf and attacks Mauricio. Meanwhile, back home, Clara is frantic. She looked everywhere for Joel and couldn't find him. She is waiting for Joel with the landlady when they hear the sound of a crash. It's Joel, but finding him doesn't bring Clara any relief. He is covered in blood, and the landlady has seen him in his werewolf form. The landlady runs away to call the priest to exorcise the werewolf out of Joel. Clara overpowers her and sedates her before she can do that. The next morning, Joel wakes up and gets ready for school. Clara tells him to not bother because they are running away. Joel cries and wails that he doesn't want to but she doesn't listen to him. Joel goes into the little room and tries to take off the decorative lights in the room. Clara tells him they need to leave and he replies that he wants to take his lights with him. Clara enters the room and starts taking off the lights. Joel stealthily leaves the room and locks Clara in. Freed from his mother's nagging, he leaves for school and decides to attend the school dance. It's late in the afternoon when Clara's co-worker checks up on her. She hears Clara screaming and releases her. Clara realizes that it's late in the night so Joel would become a danger to everyone around him. She takes out Anna's gun that she kept all these years and goes to the school dance. Joel is practicing with Amanda when he starts changing. He claws at her hand when Clara shoots him in the leg to stop him. The girl runs away screaming into the crowd and tells them everything that happened. Meanwhile, Clara takes her son home and bandages his wounds. She has him shackled again, but the boy does nothing as he is wounded. The crowd becomes a mob, and they all come looking for Joel. Clara releases his shackles and holds out her hand wordlessly pleading with him to recognize her. Joel recognizes his mother and gently holds her hand. Both Joel are prepared to fight the crowd together as mother and son. And that's a wrap. This was a recap of the 2017 Brazilian fantasy horror feature, Good Manners, directed by Juliana Rojas and Marco Dutra. Were you all taken aback by how the tale unfolded 
especially considering Clara's protective instincts. If you were in Anna's shoes, would you have made the same choices in the face of such unexpected transformations? Share your thoughts on the story's twists in the comments below with hashtag CinemaRecap. Until next time.